Welcome everybody to part two of my interview with Lisa Boker. We're going to dig into the nuts and bolts of AIT, quick AIT, and how you can use it and why it works. Please join us. This is great for professionals as well as for people who are wanting to work in their own lives to heal. See you inside. Welcome back to the CPTSD podcast. This is season three, episode three, part two of our conversation with Lisa Boker, who is a licensed clinical social worker in Rhode Island. And in our previous, hi Lisa, just so people know you're there. Um, in our previous conversation, we were talking about how to return to wholeness with AIT and what that means. Um, and go back and listen to that if you haven't. This segment that we're doing right now, we're really going to talk about AIT, something which is advanced integrative therapy. I've mentioned it a lot of times on this podcast. Let's get into some nuts and bolts about how it works, because um, I do not believe in gatekeeping information. And if this can help people, then let's do it. So one of the components you and I were chatting about, Lisa, is that AIT is on the cutting edge of what therapy is doing right now. And it has been for 20 years or more. So I love that we like knew this way back in the 90s and have been doing it that long. But now we have science, so it's okay to talk about. Um, and believe me, I believe in research. I'm a researcher, so I'm not trying to scoff at that. Um, mm -hmm. But right now best practices are a combination type therapy. And there are lots of examples. I'm going to name a couple of right now that these therapies involve two things, cognitive processing of what's happening. So that would be top down. This is traditional therapy by itself, cognitive behavioral therapy, talk therapy, psychodynamic therapy, um, even psychoanalysis would be in this top down processing what we've learned is that our body also stores memory of trauma, not just our brain and our mind. And so newer treatments that are coming out, um, such as EMDR, eye movement desensitization and reprocessing, um, EFT, another energy psychology, emotional freedom techniques. And then I'm still trying to figure out if I think that this is a body up process, but internal family systems and I'm going to go, yeah, because they really intern. I love IFS and it really does help us get in and feel what's going on with our different parts. So these would be combinations. A, a bottom up approach would just be physical, inter inter pardon me, I will get it out, physical interventions into the body, right? So with a top down, bottom up approach, we're integrating the cognitive issues and, and concerns that are going on with the trauma, as well as the experience of the body the sensations of the body and any place that we have a stuck charge, which is a term from energy psychology, not necessarily AIT. So that was a nice little mini lecture to get us rolling here. <laughs> um, you know, so I guess what I would like to hear from you, Lisa, is how does AIT use top down, bottom up? And what does that mean to you as a clinician? Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you for giving us that context, because it's, it's really important when we think of especially complex PTSD that we're having to think about something that's been in someone over a long period of time. So it's settled in at many, many levels. And when I think of it settling, sometimes it can get kind of stubborn. <laughs> so we're going to have to think about, you know, if we just come from one direction. So even if we just come from the head or we come from the cognitive place, that might not be enough. And also if we just come from the body, you know, and we're just feeling something it's great that we're feeling it and we're getting in touch with it, but it doesn't necessarily move it out. So I think um, the combination of these, and there, you know, as Tabitha's mentioning, there are, there are other approaches in addition to AIT that, that combine them, but this is something that you wanna be thinking about um, if you're a listener and you have complex PTSD, is you're looking for something that's really integrating these two, especially if yours, um, is kind of fitting that category of like, it's feeling difficult to find um, a modality that's working well. So that's the first thing I wanted to add. <laughs> Perfectly said. Do you want me to talk a little bit more about AIT now? Go in depth. I think that's great because okay. um, I feel like I've been teasing people for two seasons <laughs> about what okay. AIT <laughs> is. And, uh, great. Uh, yeah, and let's go for it. So would you like to lead that part of the conversation for us? 
Sure. Excellent. So let's start um, with AIT's definition of trauma because that sort of brings us back to um, the theme I had of wholeness and sort of thinking of AIT bringing us into wholeness. So I'm just going to paraphrase it right now, but it is a long definition. So if we think about anything that happens um, that's unresolved, so unresolved traumatic or, or difficult experiences can get triggered in the present. So something that happens in the present reminds us of this unprocessed material, and that stirs up in us negative emotions, sensations. It can be really intense and difficult. And again, then we need to be able to cope with that. So we might um, have healthy coping mechanisms, but if we're traumatized, we might not. And we might just have to pull on whatever we have. And I like to just say here that, you know, if we're in survival mode and that's what we have to do and we need dissociation, then that was a good choice. And I hear you really affirming that. I agree. Every, yeah, I mean, everything that you have done to be safe and alive to this point was smart and brilliant. Mm -hmm. And usually people realize that it's not working anymore or as well as it used to. And um, yes. I just wanted to pop in with one more, ah. which is um, you may not know you're traumatized at the beginning of this process. And so when you were describing the definition of trauma, where something in the past triggers us today, you might not connect those triggers. Yes. Right. And so that's when I hear clients saying things like, I don't know what's wrong, but I go from zero to 80 in a minute flat, <laughs> you know, boom, off to the races. And we're not sure why. If you get overstimulated, if you get reactive and you're not sure why, I'm going to point you lovingly to looking into whether you have some underlying trauma. So mini lecture number two is now complete. Please continue, Lisa. It's <laughs> <laughs> such a good point because sometimes we can see the connection and sometimes we can't. We just know back to what you're saying too much is up. We know we're overreacting or we're having too much intensity or it's disrupting our lives too much. So if we combine both of these and we think of whatever happened to us that we know was painful, all of these things that we don't know why we do them all the time, um, why our addictions are hard to let go of, these are in themselves causing uh, pain and suffering because they have outlasted their helpfulness, but they're not going away. So AIT thinks of both of these things as accumulatively kind of eroding away our wholeness. And Asha in her definition says that these kinds of coping mechanisms and trauma uh, impede this development of our, our healthy, positive qualities. I use the example in the, um, First part of this of love as being one of these essential qualities that we really need and our spiritual connection. So we also talked in that episode of uh, having this very open-ended definition of what spirit is in terms of something about your inner knowing, this, this part of you that's bigger than the conscious self. So when that, when we lose love and we lose the spirit connection, we fracture our human wholeness. So that our very long definition in, in AIT of kind of what trauma can be, it can be something that we consciously or, or, or happens to us and it gets stored unconsciously in us, but it's affecting our present life and it's not letting us have puff holes. And it hurts like the Dickens. Exactly. It, yeah. I just wanted to pop in with some empathy. It hurts like the Dickens. Exactly. All right. And people don't always understand why we're suffering so much because often people can say, well, that was, you know, 10 years ago. Why is that, why is that affecting you now? And there's not a good answer for that. And when you're asked that kind of question, you know, there's, I mean, there is a good answer for it. We're giving it to you right now, <laughs> but in the middle of a relationship, there's no answer that will satisfy that question is what I was trying to say. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if and you are, if you're somebody who loves somebody, with CPTSD, mm. I would really um, ask for you to remember two things. First of all, your needs and experience are important. And sometimes those of us with CPTSD can make that hard. 
So please just keep remembering that your needs are important and self-care is really important and self-nurturing when you are loving somebody with CPTSD. And if you have CPTSD, you are not broken. We just need to figure out what's going on and repattern it. And I think that's where we're headed with our AIT information. So yes, I'm going to back yeah. off again and say, where do we go, Lisa? <laughs> Uh, no, beautifully said. I think there's there's always a way to make sense of it. We just have to kind of start to get patient and, and go a little closer. And in AIT, um, we'll talk a little bit at some point about we have tools to also kind of go in and talk to the unconscious directly. And that is incredibly helpful. But what I was going to do first is just do an example of when we are um, we have kind of our definition of, of AIT. If we wanted to think about maybe an example that could be happening in someone, and also from AIT um, perspective, we're kind of, I'm going to talk back to the, the top down and the bottom up. So the top down is kind of how we're conceptualizing things. So we're thinking about trauma exists. And in AIT, we have something called the three-step transformation. That means that we are looking for treating trauma, always getting these three steps. So one common example I've seen in my practice is abandonment. So this could be very literal abandonment. This could be more symbolic abandonment, like emotional abandonment or something like that, not being actually present. So if we imagine someone had a parent like that, you can later on replicate it and you don't even know it. <laughs> mm -hmm. Have you seen that type of thing? Oh, I've done it, Lisa. <laughs> <laughs> I've absolutely seen it and I've done it. And we don't know what's happening because remember going back to our view of the world, who we are, who people are, how the world works. That's what we're addressing here. So please continue. Yes. So if I think of someone that maybe um, their their parent wasn't was absent both physically and then when they were home, they weren't really there emotionally they might also learn to abandon themselves and their own needs. So we could see that in that they are uh, giving all their energy to other people, to causes, um, and that in the end is sort of them abandoning parts of their body that's getting worn out and then maybe they're not sleeping and so they're getting some chronic health issues starting to happen. So we can see some pretty negative trajectories happen because someone's unconsciously repeating what, what happened to them in the first place. So if we come back to um, three-step transformation in AIT, we are always starting with asking clients like what's happening in their life. So what's your present issue? So in this case, we might have someone that says, well, um, I'm putting other people first. Then we always ask, well, what does this remind you of? Now, often it comes back all the way to childhood, not always, but oftentimes someone can say, you know, in my example, they might say, well, dad never had time for me. So now we have our present issue and we have our, what comes back in the past, our origin. Mm -hmm. So in the three-step transformation, we treat first our origin. So I might treat this as a, something that happened many times as a pattern. I would say all the times and ways. My dad never had time for me. Then I would come back and I treat how it's showing up today, all the times and ways I never make time for myself and I always put others first. Then we have one more piece in AIT, and this goes back to um, a concept we talked about in the first episode about we want full treatment, not partial treatment. Yes. Asha found that it's not enough to treat the first time and the time that it's happening in the present. We also have to treat what's called the connection between them. Mm -hmm. So we put them together. And again, um, I didn't mention this, but when we make these treatment phrases, this is our verbal part. This is kind of where we're using language to really name it. So we would put the two together, the cause and the effect. And we might say, because dad had um, never had time for me, I ignore my needs by compulsively putting others first. We would treat that one and that breaks the repetition pattern. Yep. And so I just, may I say just a couple things? Yes. Okay. First is that that bridge or that connection between the two is not at all about self, about blaming. 
the victim, right? It's not all about how you should have gotten over this. It's about how we keep that pattern going in our life. And there's research on this. It's called a compulsion to complete. And I just wanted to say like, this is a normal thing that people with trauma do. So if you're doing it, it's not shame on you. It's like, great, you found that out. The compulsion (laughs) to complete, the compulsion to complete is so that we can resolve the trauma. And so by adding that connection piece in there, we satisfy that compulsion, at least on that one thing. And the other thing I wanted to say, Lisa, is I've had a lot of practitioners that I've talked with about AIT over the years go sideways when I say we treat the origin first, because we are trained to treat the complaint that walks in the door. Uh And I think that that treating the origin first is why AIT can go so deep so fast. That's interesting. Yes. my, My opinion about that. You know, so if you're a practitioner who is considering AIT as a modality, there is purpose in finding the origin first and treating that first. Mm-hmm. So please, um, what what should what else should we know, Lisa? <laughs> Just to add one thing to what you what you said there, which I think is helpful, is um in that compulsion to complete as well. I like to think also in in AIT talks about this is your your unconscious or your spirit again is trying to help you heal. So when these repetitions happen, right, they are opportunities to heal something. And I think of it again, and I, I tend to teach my clients this to think about, you know, those things coming into your life as gifts and, and like these chance to find the things that that still hurt you from the past that you need to heal out. So another another way, interestingly, of seeing your your spirit active in your life, giving you this chance to heal. Mm hmm that guidance that we need to resolve. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I love that. Thank you for adding that. Yeah. So that's our kind of, if we're coming into the top down thinking of the IT, let's talk about the, the bottom up. So AIT uses um, the chakra system and this is the energy centers. And in AIT, we use 13 energy centers and maybe tap, you can, demonstrate for us. They start at the crown of the head and we contact them with our palms. So you can um, notice that Tabitha is contacting that and we move down the body. So the next one would be our forehead, then our chin, our throat, our heart, left side, and then the right side of the heart. And then we go down to solar plexus and navel, pelvis. I don't know if I can get that in there, but here we go. <laughs> it's hard to demonstrate. It. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Pelvis. Right middle. And then we have left crease at the top of your leg where your hip crease is. There you go. And then right crease on the opposite side, and then your root, which is basically sitting on your hand. Mm -hmm. And these are physically the places that we're touching. And when we touch these places, there's, you know, electromagnetic energy in our hands. There's that same kind of energy in our chakras that's held. And we're activating our energy centers, which are these amazing places that connect to nerve ganglia. They connect to all parts of our being. And they have symbolic issues that, that that they relate to throughout these different centers. When we connect to them, we're inviting them to release what's stored there. And these energy centers store our memories, our positive memories, our negative memories. Everything is kind of recorded in there. They're, they're interfacing with our unconscious, which is this huge storage house of everything that happened to us. So it is a incredibly powerful system releasing. Absolutely. Can I throw a couple of ideas? Yeah. In there? Um, the other, the other thing that the chakra system relates to is your endocrine system. Mm. So every single time you're placing uh, your hand or whatever, I, whatever body part you're using, um, because sometimes people want to be off their body and that's, that's for advanced. But the point I'm getting to is every single one of these centers is related to a gland. And I think for me personally, that mattered when I started working on my autoimmune 
issue because when, you know, when you're, when you're struggling and hurting from complex trauma, most of the time we're living in an adrenalized state. And so what we're talking about there is way too much cortisol, adrenaline management problems, which also leads to insulin issues. And I know I'm kind of going off on a lecture here, so we'll wrap it back in. I um, just wanted to say that that endocrine system and the stimulation that comes through this process is also important chemically to your body. And the other thing I really appreciate about the way Asha and AIT have integrated this system into a Western psychology, because that's not where it came from, right? And and Jung loved the chakra system too, which is where a lot of AIT came from. Um, oh. I really appreciate the approach that Asha has taken in not colonizing the content of the chakra system. She really oh. tries and does present that in a way that is respectful and appreciative and captures the core concept behind chakras. Sorry, I'm on a, a decolonizing <laughs> trend right now. I, I'm just really aware of that. And I wanna make sure for those of you who are concerned about that, that there are two white ladies right here telling you about a system that did not come from our DNA's pool, right? That it is respectful and, um, and I think a very loving approach to the chakras. And one last thing, sorry, Lisa, I'm excited. <laughs> so, you know, all that ganglia that you were talking about, I think really also correlates with polyvagal theory. Ah, uh, yes. Because it all, uh, when I watch clients go through this process and my own experience is that even if you start out in an activated stressed state, you can feel the calming happen as you go through the process. And some of that is release and some of that is vagal tone, right? Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. um, so thanks for my third lecture of the day. I'll probably have two more. <laughs> where, do, where do you want to go next with AIT? Well, I think you said something really important I want to touch on. And that is um, Asha's first career was, was an anthropologist. So I think she brings a really um, attunement to not appropriating. Yes. And, and using, using, you know, if we're going to tap into these ancient healing systems that we're using them with respect. Yes. Doing. So, and I want to just come back to a piece I missed talking about, which is what, what AIT integrates because in its name is <laughs> advanced integrative therapy and it really integrates quite a lot. So we've named some, you know, spiritual traditions that it draws upon, but also Jungian, psychodynamic, cognitive behavioral, gestalt, family systems, self-psychology, uh, with an understanding of all these kinds of modern advances in neuroscience, epigenetics, combining that with spirituality and, and energetic treatment. So it's pretty powerful because I think it combines some things and creates you know, you would think with all this combining, it'd be like super, super um, difficult, but it, it's actually very simple. Like, like the essence of the treatment process is so beautiful in that way that it's easy to treat. It's easy for people to treat themselves. So I, I think I would say that to your listeners is that I love that um, once you learn this system, you can use it immediately uh, in between sessions, you can use it on yourself. It's incredibly empowering to be able to treat um, triggers to feel like you can make a difference. So another positive. <laughs> yeah, a total positive. And it's an immediate difference because if you learn, um, and I think we're going to go into talking about quick AIT here. If you uh, learn quick AIT, then uh, you, if you have CPTSD, it is my opinion, you will still need a therapist because First of all, you deserve to be mirrored mm. in this process, process, and that is repairing to attachment problems that we may have. Um, but secondly, this is a lot, and you deserve somebody to help shovel. It is a lot, you know. So in between sessions, and would you believe we have five minutes left? <laughs> It's very um, important to talk about this topic. <laughs> I will have you on for 800 more shows. Um, <laughs> and I will quit lecturing now because I do want to get to the, the core concept of what we're doing here. Um, but just a quick reminder that you will be teaching this in the wow. next couple of weeks. January 21st starts an AIT basics class. So for those of you who are professionals in this field, if you're interested, you can go to AIT.institute and... Um, find that information. We'll also have that and Lisa's contact information in the description. So 
I'm handing it back over, Lisa. Wonderful. Okay, so to recap a bit, um, when we are using AIT, it has um, both a simple system in the sense that the way we're showing you to treat, once you learn it and simple, it's all you ever learn. <laughs> You're using the same system all the time. So it's beautiful in that way. But at the same time, it allows us and this is what, what Tabitha is talking about. When you're working with a practitioner, it allows that person to access the depth of things. So I think of complex PTSD almost like this, um, you know, like I like to garden. So if I am doing my normal weeding, it's easy. It's just kind of pulling things up. If I have an invasive vine, it's totally different. <laughs> it goes around fragile flowers. You're trying to like separate them from it. You have to get every root out. I think of complex PTC that it's a bit more, it needs a little more effort and work. And so that's what this system kind of provides. Um, if you are a mental health practitioner, uh, Tabitha and I would love for you to come to our training. I have to just announce quickly that Tabitha is a new AIT teacher. <laughs> so congratulations. Thank you, Lisa. I feel really lucky to have you um, assisting me at the January training. So would love for anybody to come who would like to learn this basics material. And as an individual, if you want a way to start using Quick AIT, um, we're going to leave a link where Asha Clinton, you can watch her teach you how to do that. And also um, Sacred Medicine, which is a book by Lissa Rankin. You will leave that link. There's a chapter in there devoted just to AIT and tells you just exactly how to use Quick AIT. Perfect. I mean, those are excellent links. And um, I would also add that if you are already certified in AIT and you're interested in other um, seminars oh. that are coming up, please go look at the website again, because there are some important ones coming up. Um, I'm just waiting until we get the healing from complex or historical trauma up again. I loved that. I learned a lot. Um, there are advanced trainings with AIT as well. And Lisa, I'm wondering if you would be willing to talk just a little bit about what it was like for you on your personal journey to use AIT and how that was different than other therapies you had tried. Uh, and if you're not, just tell me. Oh, yeah. No. Um to me, what, what AIT did was it felt like before when I was using maybe just other energy psychology modalities that I got like a little bit of relief. Um, and that was great. That was necessary. But I didn't get an understanding of how trauma existed in me. Mm -hmm. I didn't get also the support to grow the things that never had grown in me because of the trauma. So I felt like it went deeper, it got things out more thoroughly, more permanently. And it supported me um, through developing positive beliefs, developing positive qualities, to really also an ego strength, developing my ego strength more to have the capacity to do my purpose. And, and that is a tremendous gift. That is a tremendous gift. Um, I really appreciate you being here for these two episodes. You're welcome back anytime. In closing, what is the one nugget that you want to make sure people listening to this episode remember? Okay, that is really that trauma um, disconnects us from love. So we want to remember that trauma gets in the way and that you can always reconnect Mm. That's part of the possibility of healing is that you can have a connection, not only to the love of others and, and love for yourself, but an infinite source when you connect to love through your center, or your, whatever spirit is to you. So that gift is always there for you to um, take in as you heal. 
What a beautiful way to end this time. I look forward to seeing you all back here for our next podcast. We'll be talking with Dr. Rola Hullam about compassion fatigue, which she says is a myth. So that's intriguing to me. Uh, I'd love to hear your thoughts about what we've talked about today with Lisa and I. And just a reminder that if you want to contact Lisa or AIT, all of that information will be in the description below. Um, and if you want to join the upcoming basics class starting January 21st, hop on today and make sure you reserve your space. Thank you everybody so much for your support. And Lisa, maybe we'll talk to you in the future. Sounds great. Lovely to be here. Thank you.